Hello, citizens of the internet, and welcome to the Dad's Guide to Minecraft, Create Above and Beyond. Well, in today's episode, we are going to start smelting for the first time. That is right. We're going to go ahead and get into Tinker's Construct a little bit here and uh, get brass going, because going forward, we're going to need to use some of the brass tools and um, brass little gadgets in order for us to make the machines uh, as effective as possible. So, smelting brass sounds like a plan? Then let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do today is um, we need to, well, I cleared some space out here, as you can see when I first popped in there. This is where it's going to go. This is going to be one of our workstations. It's not going to be a part of any of the processes that we have set up over there uh, because we don't need to automate the production of brass. We just need to have access to brass as a uh, metal. So uh, we're going to do all that here in our workshop. And um, to do this, we are going to need to make seared bricks. So let's go over really quick to our farms, which I've had off um, for about a week now. Uh, they have not been running uh, because we need to grab some of the materials we'll need for seared bricks. And luckily we're producing all of those materials um, normally, uh, clay, sand, and um, the last one is gravel, which is over at the uh, the uh, iron farm over there. So to make grout, uh, you can use a, a clay block up in the corner like this, and then you do uh, sand for four of them, not, uh, not all f uh, five there, and then you use gravel for the other four like that, and you get eight grout. So let's go ahead and grab that. Um, that gives us a, quite a bit of grout. We We, May or may not use all that. I'm not sure exactly how much we'll need, but we can go ahead and get our lava going here. Turn you off. There we go. And we can go ahead and throw the grout down right there, a stack at a time, get it all cooking up, turn it into seared bricks, and uh, then we can start building the different components for our smelter setup for our um, brass. All right, there's our first stack of seared bricks. Perfect, and let's go ahead and throw more grout on there. We'll do another stack, and then I'm going to do uh, some glass as well. Okay, so we're gonna make a couple of the different starter uh, smelting array things that we can make, and one of them is going to be a casting table. So we can do that first, that is really easy. Uh, just make it like you're making a pair of pants, um, no problem there. Then we're going to make some faucets. Um, we only need one, but it makes two, so we'll grab those. Now we need, and I'm going to actually run out of room here in my inventory. Uh, I'm always having problems with my inventory. But we're going to need to go ahead and make a couple things. We're going to need to make the, um, the heater, which is just like making a furnace like this. And we're going to make two of them like this. And the last thing that we need to make is, and I'm going to have to, I really am going to have to get rid of some stuff here real quick because that is just too much in my inventory right now. Um, the, the last one is the melter and to do this we actually need to make some glass first. Uh, so I think that this is, you make it like an X like this and we'll do that. And then you fill in the rest with seared bricks. So let's just go ahead and double check and make sure that's correct. Yep, that is correct. Okay, we need two of those. And then we're gonna put these in the middle like this. And then you put uh, the seared bricks underneath it like this. So we're just gonna do that again like that. Okay. So that should be everything that we need from a seared brick standpoint. And we have um, quite a bit of the bricks left over. We will eventually make a giant smelter. So not a problem. We can go ahead and put these back in um, our little storage area right here for now. Uh, I might grab one of these because we're going to end up making a gold cast um, a little bit later. Okay, I'm also going to need to make a uh, couple things here. We're going to need uh, two basins. And uh, for those, we just get our andesite alloy and um, make a... Not quite that big. There we go, like a boat. We need two of those. And we're going to need to make a whisk. So we're going to go like around like this. And where is the andesite I just put down? And we do two like that. That gets us our whisk, and we can combine that with the andesite machine, and that'll get us a mechanical mixer uh, right here in this table. We do that, that, there we go. 
Okay, so I think we're getting to the point where we have most of everything that we're going to need for this build. We have our uh, two melting stations, our two heaters, uh, two pumps. Uh, we have pipes. Um, we already need a water source, uh, so we'll have to get buckets for that. A mechanical mixer. Um, we are going to need a power source back here as well, so I might... I don't think I'm going to go off of this one because that one's already kind of at max. I think I'm going to go out the back here and I'll make um, another thing with a bunch of uh, water wheels and then speed it up a little bit as well. So I'll do that right now, um, right back here, and then I'll cut back and we'll, we'll continue with this build. Okay, there we go. We got the power all set up. It's spinning at a really, really high RPM, which is great. Um, Hopefully that won't overstress when I hook up uh, the two pumps and the mixer to it. If it does, we can always come in and step this down a little bit or add another water wheel onto the back of it. Um, but it is um, that that is going to process things very quickly, which is good. Okay, before we get um, into building the actual smelting system itself, um, I want to make a gold cast first. So basically, if we just kind of do smelting 101, if we have our seared heater down here at the bottom and we have our melter on top oh, if i can crouch click right there like that um this is basically all you need uh you just need a uh, something to get it the molten stuff out of so and this right right now we're using the seared faucet and we are going to dump it into a um smelting table right here a casting table because uh, what i need is i need a gold cast uh, to make this process automated or semi-automated. Uh, so we're going to melt some gold down in here and then we're going to make a cast out of it. So let's go ahead and we'll throw in, um, um, I think we'll do golden nuggets for right now. So we basically can just uh, click on this interface here. There we go. Uh, having some hard times with it responding. And I think we're going to have to melt this down a couple at a time. Uh, not a big deal. So we need to put some fuel down here and uh, for that, let's go ahead and grab some coal. I did bring some coal over here just so we have it available to us. We can just put one in there for right now. There we go. I was like, why isn't that going? All right. Now, in order to make a cast with gold, and the reason we're using gold is because gold will stay the entire time. Uh, if you use sand to make your cast, it's a good for a one time use. So we're going to use one of the seared bricks as the template. Uh, so we're going to put that down right here and we're just going to have to keep on putting uh, these in here until we have enough for a um, to fill up this whole area. And I think it should be the equivalent to a nugget. So I mean to a ingot. So it should be nine total. We'll do this one right here. So this should be the last three. And if we hit this. There we go. It's going to cool on the outside and it takes that away there. And uh, we have our cast and we will need that as we go forward. So let's go ahead and uh, pick the rest of these up here. And I can't use Tinker's, um, I can't use the thing for that. So I'll have to use the pickaxe, but all good, all good. We just needed to get that um, one thing first before we start building. So let me go ahead and put the gold away real quick here. I'm running out of space. Actually, you know what? I have another chest right here. We can throw stuff in here, put you in there for right now. All right, so what we want to do is we want to have a system that has two of those smelting uh, setups on either side. So a heater, a melter, um, and then we're going to pump the molten stuff into a mixer uh, that's going to mix it. And then that mixer is going to then pour it into another basin that is then going to uh, pour into the smelting table. Why it needs two basins, I'm not exactly sure, but I tried this in the creative world to get it to work properly because I could not get it to work in this world uh, without doing that. So if anybody knows, let me know. But um, I think this is the, the ideal setup for this system. Okay, so let's start with the front first. Um, let's go ahead and grab our barrels and our hoppers. And let's see what else we need. We need a basin and the searing table. We got that. Uh, we'll put that on at the end. It's not necessary right now. There's the mixer and there's our basins. Okay. So we're going to have a barrel right here. And I think I want it to look like that. So we see that this top part right here, and we're going to have 
a hopper coming in to it like this. Now on top of this is where the casting table is going to be. So let's go ahead and uh, place that down. I never seem to have everything in my inventory. I, I, it is in my inventory, I just couldn't see it because it's like so dark. There we go. Okay, we're gonna put trap doors around the outside here. And um, for that, let's just use, let's use oak so we can kind of see through it as well. If we had acacia nearby, I don't have um, any kind of acacia, um, anything nearby me right now. So um, I like I like being able to see, there's one oak trap door there, but I, we just need, do we need three? I think we just need three. So what I'll do is I'll make two. I don't have, oh, there's a crafting table. I was like, I don't even remember what's in my base here anymore. All right, so let's go ahead and make all those. There we go. Um, I think it's just three we need because we're gonna put actually a barrel on uh, the one side. No, actually it's four. It's four that we'll need. So let me go ahead and craft another one real quick here. Uh, just to be safe that we get all this stuff here. It doesn't matter if we make a you know one more, not a big deal. All right, so we're actually going to go around the base here and we're gonna put trap doors down. Oh, we could have done this at the end of the process. Uh, it's not necessary to do it at the beginning like this. I just wanted to make sure that um, I don't forget any of the steps as I'm teaching this. And the reason we want water underneath the casting table like that is we um, can actually cool the metal faster so it pops out quicker. So let's go ahead and grab some water in our little handy dandy bucket. Come back up here and we are going to um, essentially just drop water right underneath here. You can click on the, the hopper itself, put water down, and we can flip these up around the outside like that. Perfect. Okay, now when we um, we put the molten stuff in here, it'll cool quickly and it'll drop into our barrel and then we'll have our brass. Now we can come up here with our basin and uh, kind of crouch click on top of this one right there, like that. And then we're gonna put our uh, faucet right here and then we're gonna have another basin coming off the back of this, uh, which I think would probably be ideal is, um, do I have any building blocks? I do have granite right here. Um, we can just build this up till we get to the right height right there and put down our second basin. Oh, did you see that? Did you see that? Okay. We're gonna put our second basin down like that. Okay. Notice that as soon as you do that, it makes a spout that comes into this basin right here. So once it mixes everything that we want in this, um, little basin here, it'll come down automatically in here and then we'll have it set up to automatically pour and cast into this one. Now, since we're up here, we can go ahead and put our mixer down like that. And uh, let's come back down here and take this stuff out because we won't need that for right now. Okay, so if we can take a look at this, it's mixer into basin, basin into basin, basin pours into uh, the uh, casting table. And we can go ahead and put the faucet on here now as well. So let's go ahead and put this on so off the side like that. Perfect. Now coming into either side of this top basin right here, we're going to have mechanical pumps. So let's have one, oh, not like that. Uh, where's my wrench? I never have everything in my inventory when I need it. All right, let's see here. How, how do I switch this thing around again? Not like that. Not like that. Not like that, all right? Being difficult. I think we're gonna need to come at this straight ahead like this, there we go. Sometimes they're very particular. So we got that one coming in like that, that one coming in like that. So we're gonna have two lines. We're gonna be melting zinc on one side, probably over on this side and copper on this side right here. And they'll be pumped in like this on both sides. And right now, see the arrows pointing away from the basin? That is totally cool until we get this set up. Um, we'll, we'll switch everything back once we get it all time because what we want to make sure we do is um, have this um, turned on at the right time as well. So we're going to have that going just like that. All right. Now we can put our melters up here against these like that on both sides like that. And then we're going to put our heaters underneath like that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. And then what we're going to do is have uh, hoppers coming in to two locations on either side of these. There's, uh, you could probably make it so it's, um, you're doing way less of the hopper action than I'm doing here. 
And we could have it go off the front of these, but I like to see kind of like the, the nice kind of animations and uh, the, the heat thing. So I know that it's all being heat, heated up properly. So we're gonna put our fuel lines coming in on both sides, which is just going to be coal for right now. And then we can hop up here. Oh, I'm having a hard time with uh, the old staying on top of the basins here. So crouch and then put on top like that. Crouch and put on top like this. Um, we wanna do it like that. I think actually for this one, let's go ahead and, uh, can I crouch and click this one? No. Let's come back up here and uh, let's actually make this one come off the front maybe, like that. Although I'm totally not doing what I said I was gonna do with having the animations, but I think this might make it look a little bit easier for us to put the materials in to the uh, barrels. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put uh, barrels down up here on either side. And I think for this, let's just go ahead and, uh, and get up here. Can I click here and make it look go straight ahead? Yep, okay, cool. I want it to look kind of straight ahead like that. So we have those I that, that look to it. Yeah, that looks good. And then for these, we'll do the same thing. We'll put um, a little close here, here. There we go. We got the fuel barrel here. So. What this is going to do is these two barrels on the side, we're gonna put coal in those and they're gonna feed the coal automatically into the uh, heater. We're gonna put our um, uh, different ores into these and they're gonna go into the melters and then these are gonna suck in here and that's going to mix. So basically that is the design. Um, we just need to hook up the back to rotational power and kind of make this whole thing look a little nicer here. So if we grab uh, one of our little handy dandy cogwheels there, and I think I'm gonna actually need to make another cogwheel real quick here. And we're gonna have cogwheels coming off the back like that. There we go. Always never have enough of those uh, little wheels. Oop, don't need that one there. Okay, just like so. Now, if we make, uh, we have a vertical See, do I want to have it come straight off of this? I have it come straight off of this. No, I need to have a vertical one here. So we're going to do a vertical gearbox coming off right here like that. And then we're going to do a shaft coming up into this one here like this. And it doesn't matter which direction this spins uh, as long as it's spinning at a good speed. And then we are going to do another vertical coming into here like that. And we're going to do a clutch coming into here like this with a on off switch uh, so I can keep this turned off for the time being. Uh, there is the levers like that. And then we're going to do a shaft coming in and we'll see how this runs. OK, it's overstressed. All right. So I need to step this down um, a little bit or add another uh, wheel to it. Um, so I think, you know, actually what I want to do is I, I want this to move pretty quick. So I think I want to add uh, one more or two more water wheels to this right now. There's four back there. Uh, I'm going to add a couple more water wheels and I'll be right back. Okay. And there we are. I just added two more of the water wheels and let's see. Okay. Nice. Nice. Look at that. That is spinning really quickly. Perfect. This will, this will go really fast. Okay. Now that we got all of that set up, let's go ahead and add just one more thing to this. And that is a barrel right here on the side. And we're going to put a lever right here on it. And this is going to control uh, whether this is constantly putting out uh, molten material or not. We can turn it on and off here. Otherwise, it'll just back up and stay in this area. Um, now, let's go ahead and just for right now, we're going to turn this off. Let's go ahead and grab the old wrench here and we're just going to make sure that we click on this so the arrow is facing in, that arrow is facing in. So that is effectively going to be pumping uh, the molten materials into this basin up here when we're all set to go. Now let's go ahead and put our cast down right here and that'll stay as long as uh, we want it to stay in there. And um, I think before we go ahead and kind of like decorate this area in the inside, make it look a little bit better. Uh, we're going to go ahead and smelt our first brass and see how uh, that turns out. So we have um, some zinc in here. Um, and I think what I want to do is I want to turn this into zinc powder 
and I have some copper powder here. We're going to do equal parts to begin with, just so we uh, don't run into any issues. So let me go ahead and uh, turn that, uh, that off, this off, that one is on right there. Okay. And we'll go ahead and t toss this stuff in here. And then we can do our handy dandy little washing station. Throw it down on top of that. There we go. Okay, so we got uh, 54 out of that one. And let's uh, go ahead and get the copper in there too. I should have thrown this in before. You go ahead and throw that in there. Okay, so we got 54 of uh, both of the types of nuggets. So we're going to throw uh, the copper on this side over here. We'll throw the zinc on this side over here like that. And then we're going to put our coal. And uh, let's go ahead and just do... Um, we'll do 10 on each side for now. How about that? Okay, so we'll throw 10 over here. And 10 on this side right here like that. Okay. And both of those will start smelt or melting the uh, iron into molten equivalents. So we can see here the copper is coming up. And the, both these tanks will fill up. And once they get full, we're going to go ahead and turn this whole system on. Okay, it looks like we're all good. Okay, we'll go ahead and turn this on right here. Get everything working. Okay, it's mixing. Turn this on. Look at that. We are getting brass. Our first brass ingot. Nice. We just made an actual alloys. Yep, that's that's fantastic, isn't it? Okay, so we are now getting into the brass age. This is fantastic. Um, this setup is not hard to make, and it's fairly efficient. So, I mean, as you can see, it's producing... Uh, brass ingots relatively quickly no problems at all so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to pretty this whole area up really quick and um then i think we're going to do maybe just one or two more things just so we can get kind of into the brass age a little bit because for the next episode we're going to need uh brass machines uh just to get us started as we start automating so um that was that was everything right there how many ingots did we get out of that so we got six um you know we're getting there we're getting there okay Hey, this is just working fantastic. Uh, we're getting tons of brass. No problem at all. It's casting it, putting it right down in here. Uh, we can watch it as it fills up. Doing a little bit at a time. There we go. So, we, um, what I ended up doing is I just ended up putting some gabbro back here. Just to make it stand out a little bit more. Uh, unfortunately the colors make it so it's hard. If I did like a co solid concrete or something dark, really black back there, I think it'd stand out a little bit better. But, um, this isn't bad. I just put a little simple arch right here. And, uh, this will make as much brass as we, you know, end up feeding it, uh, fuel and, uh, the two components to make it. It'll keep on pushing it out. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is take the same concept. We're going to add a nozzle um, over here to this design. And um, we're going to make ourselves some electron tubes because we're going to need those to make precision mechanisms in order to uh, get our brass machines going. So uh, let's go ahead over and uh, near the iron farm and we'll set that up right now. So eventually what we're going to do is we're going to automate this whole process. Um, we're going to have iron uh, split off. Some of it come in to be melted. Some of it go into storage. Uh, it just depends. Uh, but let's go ahead and just for right now, we're just going to set this up. Uh, we're going to manually do this. So we're going to have, um, if I can put this down right there like that. Okay. Um, we're going to have liquid come out of here and into a depot. So I think what I want to do is I actually want to have, uh, let's do one of the fluid tubes coming out the top. So we'll arc this up a little bit here. Uh, if I can do this without, uh, there we go. Not too much of a problem. And I think if I put this coming out of here, do I want to do that? And actually, I think what I want to do is I want to have actually the, um, the pump mechanism come out of here. So let's see if I can time that right there. Uh, nope, but maybe we can turn it. Okay, man. And I don't have an ax on me either, so we'll have to come down here, get this. Okay. Now that that's set up, oh, you know what? I oh, should have totally stayed up there. Uh, cause we're going to need another pipe coming up here. There we go. Okay. Just need to break one. 
Do it like that. Come off like that. And then we're going to put the nozzle coming off of here. Just like that. That's really high. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Just something to kind of come around like this. And uh, let's make the uh, fluid go in the right direction. Like that. Okay. And we'll hook up power to it there. And it'll switch depending on how we have the rotation going. Now, just underneath here, we're just going to put a depot for right now. Just like that. Okay, cool. Now, I need rotational power coming into uh, the back of this. So, I think I might be able to tap in to what's below here. Um, but if not, what we could do really quick is we could make an encased fan hooked up to this. And I think that would spin at the right RPMs. We, we could double check just to see. Um, because if not, we can always switch it back to uh, one of the things down here. So I don't think I've ever set up one of those uh, fans like that before uh, on camera to show you how it works. So let's do this here. We'll just flip this up. All I'm going to do is drop some lava down uh, just behind it, like so. And then we're going to hook an encased fan up here. That's is that facing the right direction. Nope, we need to flip it around. There we go. And the last thing we need to do to get this to work is actually put a lever on the side of it. There we go. So that right there isn't going to do anything at all. We're going to need to actually, I think, spin that up a little bit. That's only 16 stress units. I think we need to be 32. Um, hmm. I think. Maybe. Let's, let's go ahead and we'll throw some stuff in there and just double check. Okay, we got um, the iron we can put in here. So we'll put this in here like that. Um, and then we'll put a piece of coal down here into the heater. And that will part will work, right? That'll turn into liquid. Now, will this actually output? That is the, that is the question. I think we're going to need some more in here just to see if it's actually going up in there. Okay, so now we need something to have it spray on top of. So let's just double check and uh, see if we have everything we need over here, which we're going to make some uh, polished rose quartz really quick. And I don't have quartz crystals over here. Okay, we're going to make some polished rose quartz. And to make polished rose quartz, we need to do a couple things first. One, we need to make rose quartz. Uh, you can use um, the nether quartz or the cirrus quartz crystals. And we need to do this in a normal crafting table right here. Uh, it just takes one of those per, uh, thing of, oh, there we go right there of rose quartz. And we're going to need a couple of these. So let's just go ahead and, um, let's just do all of those for right now. Okay. And then to polish it, you need sandpaper. So we need sand and paper, sandpaper, pretty easy. It does not stack. And the way you do this is you hold the sandpaper in either your primary hand or your half hand, and you can just go ahead and uh, click the rose quartz. Uh, so let's get this in our off hand here and get that there. And then when you hold down, it polishes it. There we go. So we'll just keep on working on that uh, until we get all of those. Okay. And we should be able to throw the polished rose quartz then down on this depot. This should spray. Yeah, see, it's not, it's not even actually. Is it? Oh, yeah, there's some in there. Okay, let's let's try it out. Okay, there we go. All right. Nice. It does work. So that doesn't need to be any faster than that. Uh, for right now, we're good. And there's our electron tubes. Perfect. We have six of them. All right, now this is going to allow us to make our brass machines. So um, we need to put together kinetic mechanisms with um, these electron tubes and a screwdriver in a line similar to this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and set up another line over here uh, that we will eventually, you know, I might actually just have it come right off of this one um, so we can pull some of our content out of here and turn it into a brass machine. So um, let me go ahead and set that up really quick. So it's just going to be deployers and it's going to be uh, some of these uh, mechanical belts. Okay, and there we are. Nothing too complicated, just like this one over here. Um, I could make those double chests once we automate this and have the electron tubes automatically go up into there and then split all automatically. And uh, kind of like 
the kinetic mechanism, the precision mechanism needs a tool and that is a screwdriver. So let's go ahead and make a couple of screwdrivers really quick. And it's a simple recipe. It's just, uh, you do three along the diagonal there and that was a terrible diagonal, <laughs> but that'll be enough. And then we do a blue die on either side like that. And we get uh, screwdrivers. Okay. Oh, look at that. Not a, not consumed in the assembly process. Um, you know, I probably should have read that first. So, uh, I have some extra screwdrivers if you want some. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, we have a supply. So that goes on last. Um, let's see if I can get it into this guy's hands here. There we go. Okay. And then we need to split the, uh, electron tubes between these two, which will give us 28. So let's go ahead and put those in each one of these hoppers here like this or the chest that go into the hoppers and there's the electron tubes uh, that one kind of glitched up there for a second now if we go ahead and put um let's go ahead and put uh, 28 of the uh kinetic mechanisms like that okay uh we'll put those let's get this right here into this barrel they'll come out of here at record speed uh, and go boop, boop, boop. And then we should have precision mechanisms in this barrel down here at the end of the process. So let's uh, just double check real quick here, make sure this works. Okay. Looking good so far. All right, let's check them out. Precision mechanisms, awesome, okay. So once we get eight of those, we can make our first brass machine. So uh, as you can tell, you need lots of electron tubes um, to make just any of the brass machines that we're gonna need. So we're gonna have to automate that process and I think that'll probably be what we do next chapter or next uh, episode, uh, it'll be chapter two is what we'll be stepping through. Even though we've done some of those steps, uh, automating it is the big part of the chapter. So. Let's go ahead and uh, make our first brass machines. Let me go ahead and make a brass casing. And to do that, we will need to come over to our little brass area. And um, I think we can go ahead and press all of these because I don't, I'm not sure what we're gonna use brass for otherwise, but well, you know what? We'll just go ahead and press half just for now, uh, just so we don't um, accidentally need brass for something else uh, in this process. Throw that down there, turn on our press and we'll get our Brass plates. Okay, there we go. And then a crafting table or a two by two, it doesn't matter. You just put your brass sheets with a log of any type and you get brass casing. So let's go ahead and get all those. We have 24 brass casings, not too shabby. Uh, what we won't be able to make is, you know, obviously the gating factor right now for us is those, um, the precision mechanisms that we're making and we need more electron tubes. So it, it's going to take a little while for us to get this. So it's a nice automated process here. So we have 28, uh, which is not, we'll be able to make three brass machines, which is what we'll need for the, the next episode. So you just surround it like that. And there we go. Brass machines. All right. And I got my first server. Congratulations. So I want to say thanks. <laughs> But we are, we are moving up and we are moving on here. So um, we'll go ahead and put those. Actually, we'll go ahead and keep those over here for right now. Right there. And I think what I'm going to do is I'll set this up on a clutch system as well so I can turn it on and off. Um, I've got too many things hooked up to this right now that are running. Um, I want to make sure that we have different parts of this turned off. This being on its own is nice, uh, but this is going to be part of a, a bigger system setting up here as we automate the production of um, our rose quartz and then we um, hit it at the end with molten iron and we marry it to this process right here um, so I, I may make the mechanism come over this direction so we come right off the iron here and we go this way and we merge it with this line right here so we can just automatically do this if we want to but that's going to bring us to the end of today's video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, like see more from Dad's Guy in the future, you know what to do. Click that like button, smash the subscribe button, and press that notification bell. 
like I said, next time we are going to try to automate the processing of the rose quartz and uh, maybe the electron tubes as a whole uh, as they come in here this way, because that is our one thing that we need uh, as we don't need to renew our screwdrivers, we found out. Uh, we do need to have our electron tubes on a regular line coming in here so we can make our brass machines. But we'll save that for next time. Until then, bye for now.